Up and down the UK, behind the facades of our local suburban streets, or hidden from view in the myriads of tower blocks, often there lurks a grim secret, only revealed when the authorities are alerted by a local resident or passerby. Here in Leicester, extreme cleaners Dave and Graham have been called out by the council to a private property next door to a council tenant who's been complaining about an infestation of rodents coming from the private house. Using their powers to force entry to the property, the council have learnt from the owner that their tenants have disappeared, leaving the property in a terrible state. What Dave and Graham are about to discover isn't the best start to the day. Yeah, terrific. It's worse than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. I think but... we would need a bigger van, Dave. <laughs> yeah. Can't wait to see what the rest of the house is like. Shocking. As they venture further into the property, as well as the tons of rubbish, the whole house is covered in mouse droppings. It seems the tenants have done a runner, leaving the mice behind. Even for extreme veteran Dave, this place seems already to have got the better of him. When you see it like this, it's, you think to yourself, why do I bother? I don't know, I'm lost. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> This is, this is the worst I've been on. So there's nothing for it but for Dave and Graham to make a start by trying to clear a path from the front door into the house. No sooner are they in than they discover the first of many horrors, an absolute proof of the source of the neighbour's infestation of mice. Ah, oh, what you found there, Dave? It's uh, <laughs> a squished mouse. <laughs> it's just so much rubbish. They've been living under that and it's just been stood on. Oh, there's another one. The mouse that lived in the shoe. <laughs> Probably the smell of the shoe that killed it. For the boys, this two-bedroomed house will take them at least a week to clear while they set about removing the tons of rubbish. But it's yet to reveal some of its worst surprises. Back in Leicester, Dave and Graham are making slow progress in returning the two-bed house to some sort of normality. Surprisingly, there's a lack of evidence of any drug abuse, which is normally par for the course with this type of extreme clean. In these cases, the cleaning team have got to deal with needles and drug paraphernalia. It makes you feel sick, really, because there's no reason to live like this at all, though, you know. It's just unbelievable. You, it's just shocking, really. It makes you feel numb. There's no drug use, there's no signs of medication. There's DVD players and there's modern stuff in here and everything like that. It looks like... There's nothing wrong with them, it's just that they can't be arsed, basically. They're just pigs, animals. Now they've made a path from the front door into the living room, the next job is to remove all the big items, such as the sofas, so the boys can get better access to the tons of rubbish. But by moving the big items, they disturb some of the hundreds of curdled milk bottles strewn all over the house. Oh, it's got mushrooms. Oh, God, that one stinks. We've got mushrooms in that one. That's the beauty, that is. Oh! It's not like something you find in a laboratory. I think these milk bottles are breeding, Dave. For Dave especially, the smell of rancid milk is too much to bear. It's like sick. But, you know, when you smell sick, it gets in the back of your throat and makes you want to be sick. It's the first time I've ever smelled it like that and it's, it's the worst. After a few hours of hard graft, they've made good headway in the front room. It's now time to move on to the dining room, a step nearer to the nightmare kitchen. For Dave, having forgot his mask, the smell of milk bottles is now becoming virtually unbearable. Oh, yeah, I think I'm going to throw up. <laughs> smell was unbelievable. To Graham's amusement, he's unearthed what seems to be an old job vacancy. I've just found a job here. He wants, he wants a job as a cleaner. That's pretty ironic. Experience preferred, but not essential, as training can be given. Duties involve vacuuming, dusting, <laughs> mopping, cleaning toilets and toilet area. Terrific. With the big items now cleared from the dining room, next on the agenda is the kitchen. It's not a job that they're in a massive rush to tackle. What, we're doing the dreaded kitchen there? In Leicester, extreme cleaners Dave and Graham are taking a well-deserved break from the stench of the revolting two-bed house clearance. But next on the agenda is the room they've been dreading. We're going to go in the kitchen now. There's uh, hundreds of bottles of milk in there that have just been left standing. They've all curled up, and that's the, that's the bad smell of this property, really. It's, it's making us both eve, have a quick drink, and then they get stuck in. 
So, somewhat refreshed, they can't put the kitchen off any longer. No, can't open the windows. No, we're locked in. But now, with no chance of any fresh yeah. air, the stench is appalling. It's just revolting. It's, it, it's making me want to be sick. I could really be sick. Yeah, I it's feel like spewing up now. <laughs> I really do. You've got to laugh just to take your mind off the smell. I don't think you can ever take your mind off the smell. The one thing that all extreme cleaners joke about is never open the fridge until you're mentally prepared. It looks like Graham summoned up the courage. Oh, my God. As expected, the fridge doesn't disappoint, filled with rotting food and the ubiquitous bottles of milk. Best to close the door on it and leave well alone for another day. As they dig deeper into the shady world of the ex-occupants whose daily lives are becoming even more of a mystery, Dave can only imagine what it would be like to run into them. It's shocking because, like you say, people live in it, and they go out, walk, probably go into the shop, and, and you know what I mean? They think to yourself, what's that smell? And it, it's them. As the tenants who sublet this house did a runner, no one will probably ever know why they chose to lead their lives in this dreadful way. Unless they just lived on takeaways, there's no sign that anybody's actually eaten from this house. Oh, I mean, no sign of cooking or anything. It's a mystery, so. isn't it? This is a well, weird mystery, this one is. The lad's first day is now drawing to a close, and with some 50 massive black bags of rubbish removed from the house, it still doesn't feel like they've even scratched the surface. It's just heartbreaking, really. She's just working eight hours a day, moving all this rubbish for nothing, really, because it doesn't seem like you're making a dent in it. It's just the final product at the end that makes it better. But there's every reason for Dave to feel despondent as they've yet to start on the downstairs bathroom. Since the filming of the show, Dave and Graham have braved the bathroom and transformed the two-bedroom house. The owner will have it refurbished and put on the market as soon as possible. Many of us have dreamt of a quiet life in the country. One woman thought she'd found that dream in Wales. But for Jan Bush, the reality became a nightmare and she wants to move out. But she can't move straight away and grime fighter Ben and his team are brought in to help. So these are the dogs, crazy dogs. They're your best friends, are they? <laughs> Don't know what I'd do without you two, are they? She lives in a World War II bunker. Um, no electric, no hot water, no sewage. Jan is anxious for her home to be cleaned and the grime fighters are ready to step in. Looks like Ben's got his work cut out. Basically, um, we've been asked to clean this one room here, this kitchen, and then there's one bedroom or one usable room at the side. This windowless concrete wartime bunker, with walls blackened by candle soot, has been Jan's home for half her life. When we start pulling stuff out, hopefully it'll go down quite quickly, but I'd like to just knock it out in a day. With no electricity or natural daylight, the team have brought a generator. As they start their work, Ben slowly realises that this is Jan's bedroom. This is where she's sleeping, obviously. For anyone who's watching this, these aren't brown. These are white, white sheets and quilts. And that's her only source of light. So you can imagine, by half past four, it's pitch black in here. And she's sitting here with her two dogs and three candles. Bizarre. Have you seen the photo on the wall? She was beautiful. How old are you there? I'm 50, I sat must when I was 40. Well, we'll give that a clean view and give that pride a place. The years have gone by, the rubbish has piled up. It all proved a bit too much. Just a terrible stench off it, They're like dog, dog mess basically. Jan's love of animals brought her here in the first place. Started off with goats, then he went on to sheep. We've had the old cattle, and we've had pigs, and we've had the chickens, and the ducks, and the horses. To start with, it was nice. They had that one room, and everything else was the animals. <laughs> we had my horse here. Well, he wouldn't come indoors. He didn't like indoors. 
Luke who used to stand on top of the bunker in a storm, thunderstorm, thunder and lightning and stand on top of the bunker. <laughs> Stupid horse. The only thing I wouldn't have had again is pigs and they were in that room next door and every time you moved or oh, it'd squeal. As time passed, the rubbish simply collected in her front room and now it threatens to engulf her. You can see loads, millions of dog ends and, and then it's just food and clothes, blankets, bedding, just all rotten, everything's rotten, that's the trouble with pulling it out. Nice onion. <laughs> but where is the kitchen? Well, in this bit is. The remnants of Jan's past are all around her. When I was first year, I enjoyed being here. Cause, you know, I had a lot of what I thought were friends around me at the time, but now there's nothing, so there's no point in me being here. I'd rather just leave now and just start a new chapter of my life. Memories will remain forever, but the rubbish has to be cleared. I reckon another hour and we'll see half the floor. The team don't need to be told, keep on digging. Back in the World War II bunker, Jan's home is being turned upside down. She waits patiently as tons of rubbish are removed. If someone was to work on a rubbish dump that had had a roof over it, for 20 years. That's what it's like working in it. Horrible job, though, isn't it? This is the worst I've ever seen. <laughs> Jan's been sharing her home with all sorts of animals. Oh, it stinks. As well as a vast collection of glass. How many bottles are we taking out? Oh. It's got to be nearly a thousand. Every time you unearth something, you dig, dig a bottle up and it breaks and you just get a smell come through. Jan is not one of those people who bring their jobs home. One of the caretakers, I used to go around with Mel Ablett. Right. I used to go around every Saturday and we'd do the cleaning. She went out, out cleaning. Oh, I was looking for that book. Look at days I've been looking for that book. After all her years of collecting, now she wants rid of it all. Do you want to keep this? No. Yeah. I gave up trying to use it because the dog kept jumping on. No, give it a good arm to someone, just give it away. Then. But what about the chandelier? <laughs> want me and the dogs to go off and just forget this lot now. The lads take a well earned rest. It can only get better from here, can't it now? So. Can't get any worse. Well, I hope not. <laughs> it's not very nice knowing you've got to go back in there. In Wales, a dark, damp World War II bunker has been home for Jan Bush for the past 25 years. Now, with the help of some extreme cleaners, she's ready to move on. Did you find the remains of all the Christmas trees and decorations? Yeah, they weren't worth keeping, really. Sorry. <laughs> The lads are not in the least bit sentimental about Jan's belongings. Uh, we're gonna bring the wood out here, yeah, make a fire then, chuck it all on, burn it, get rid of it. <laughs> but some things really do matter to her. Have we got a cobweb in the van? No. Leave just, my spiders alone. Want me to leave them? You leave them alone. Okay. <laughs> I'm quite happy I doing that. Find my spiders. <laughs> all right, we leave the spiders, they can stay. I don't think it will burn seriously, but I mean, I think I should have done that with a whole flipping place. Just put a great big bomb in there and set it off. And out of the rubble, some happy memories are stirred. Christ, this is ages and ages ago when I first started. I thought I'd lost it totally after all these years. This is from when I first started trying to do watercolour. That one is actually going down to Marlow's. Lovely little place. After many hours of work, the bunker is transformed and the lads make Jan's life a little more comfortable while she awaits her new home. And just a few final touches. Smells better. Looks 
better than it was <laughs> Yeah. Well, if you just sat on that when we first came in, your head would have been <laughs> against the wall. <laughs> so we've left your spiders. So we won't touch them. Well, there's a new bed anyway. Brilliant. <laughs> I'll get in there with her now. I'm knackered, man. <laughs> Love that sound. It's not to everyone's taste, but to Jan, it's still home. Given the key for environmental health, um, apparently the previous tenant's been deceased, um, so we're not sure what to expect inside, so we'll have a look. Environmental health get involved in dealing with properties only when their condition is a serious risk to public safety. This doesn't bode well. well There's quite a bad smell in there. Um, Looking around, there's some dog mess, well, all over the place. It's really bad smell. <clears throat> it um, hits the back of your throat just as, you, as you're trying to take a breath in here. It's not nice at all. Obviously, the suits environmental level have been in, they've been wearing suits, so it might be a good idea for us to do that. Steve has only taken a few steps. He's already forced to retreat to don his suit. This is definitely the worst smell I've ever smelled in a void property tent. Um, it's obviously been in there for a long time, festering. So now, prepared for the worst, Steve can venture back in. In Leicester, Steve is starting his assessment of the one-bedroom flat. In the bedroom, it's pretty clear why environmental health had no option but to go in first. Stepping through into the bedroom, the floor is completely covered in dog mess. It's actually made the carpet about an inch thicker than it really is through the amount of it that's in there. It gets worse around here, there's big chunks of it. Everything just looks like it's covered in it. How somebody's been alive in this property with this, going, this kind of stuff around is it's beyond me. It's quite sad really to know that somebody was living in a property like this and how it got like this. Gingerly picking his way, Steve moves on to the living room and yet more reminders of the tenant's dogs. What you can see down here is obviously it's flat, so it was obviously sloppy and it's just seeped in to the carpet. At some stage, yeah, it was fresh and he was living here with, with dog mess around him and he didn't think, oh, I'll clear that up and get out of the way. It's just been left and been ground into the carpet. It's like the dogs have been having a go at the sofa there. You can see where the claws have been scratching at it. The kitchen confirms what Steve's up against to make this flat habitable again. It seems that, for whatever reason, the deceased tenant was increasingly unable to cope with everyday life. Obviously, this is a food, food preparation area. I don't think with all this fat and dirty pots and mixed in with the flies that have been on the dog mess, I don't think we can leave any of this in. From our point of view, all the units will have to go, uh, all the worktops, the floor. Um, just looking at the sink, the water that's in there is a good few months old. There's mouldy food everywhere mixed in. So nothing's going to be able to be salvaged in there. Everything's going to have to be um, removed and we'll put a new kitchen in. But there are some signs of normality. The dead man could take pride in at least one area of his life. Some trophies up there. Looks like he was a bit of a fisherman. And they're all winners medals, so he's quite good at fishing by the looks of it. I can't see any that don't say winners. It looks like at one stage he had all his senses about him, but Unfortunately, it ended up living like this. Whatever its condition, Steve has to clear this flat as soon as possible. And as luck would have it, there are others who can take up the baton. I wouldn't like to be the person that's got to clear all this stuff out. They are, of course, our extreme cleaners, Dave, Graham and Lee. They're hugely experienced in this type of job. But as Steve hands over the keys, they still have no idea what they're about to confront. The old tenant had an unhealthy obsession with dogs. Taking them for walks was not on the agenda. Oh, my God. Oh, dog feces everywhere. The smell just itch you. Makes your eyes water. I can't believe that. It's like concrete. Should have stayed at home. My dog's going to enjoy my boots when I get home. He'll be <laughs> sniffing all around me, wondering where I've been. The smell may be awful but at least Dave has a plan. I'm just going to get all the big stuff out of the way first, all the big furniture, settees, wardrobe, bed and everything like that, and then we're just going to concentrate on removing all the rubbish. 
basically. Bag it all up and chuck it in the back of the van. As the boys make a start clearing the rubbish, local residents are hit by the smell. And even with his years of experience of this type of property, Graham is already gasping for air. That is a horrible smell. It's just, um, I, I can't describe it. It's something I haven't smelt before, but I don't think I'll ever forget it again. If the smell left by the dogs wasn't bad enough, Dave is tempted to break a golden rule. Don't open fridges when you come in these properties. It's nine times out of ten, they're nasty. It's just all got mould in it. It stinks. Dave has survived, but Graham's not sure he can hang on. Don't you feel me puking up? Wow, that's bad, that is. I've got a right lung full of that. Oh, no. Don't think I'll be eating much today, either. As they start to disturb the contents of the flat, Graham can't be sure the day will pick up. In Leicester, Dave, Graham and Lee are well underway removing all the furniture and bigger items from the flat. But then, there's the sofa. What is that, sir? We got the baby. Inside the flat, they've taken every precaution, but outside, mm, sod's law. Oh, no, I did stand in something there, didn't I? For Graham, it's cracking up time. Can't get things out the doorways. Dog <laughs> all over my boots. <laughs> Sweating, puking, it's just getting better. Removing the sofa has revealed the true colour of the carpet. Well, you've got about a quarter of an inch of just filth between where the sofa was and uh, where the, the living area is, you know. I just can't get my head around now. It's not how people live like this, it's how people let people live like this. I mean, I obviously didn't know the guy personally, but I suppose it would have been a different matter if I did know him not. I probably wouldn't have even wanted to be here, you know. But life goes on, doesn't it? You know, once this flat's all cleaned up and everything, the next people will be moving in and it'll all be forgot. They can't put it off any longer. The fridge and the freezers will have to be dealt with. The contents must be removed so the units can be sent for recycling. Putting them outside may make things easier. Nice bit of lamb there, fresh. That for a pork pie, look. There you go. A bit of mustard on that, would be all right, wouldn't it? It's all raw meat in here. What's happened is, is the freezer ain't been on, so it's all been defrosted. Just got to have a breather from the smell. It's, it's horrible. Drink was the root of the problem for the man who died here. Being a keen fisherman may have been his only consolation. For Graham, himself an angler, the trophy's point to a happier, better world. It's sad. I don't really feel like I want to bend these. To me, it's pretty emotional to say the truth. I mean, I love my fishing and that, and that. You know, some of these trophies are nice. He's obviously enjoyed himself, and he's got winners on him and things like that, so he's good at his game. I don't know, I'd like to see these go to somewhere rather than just go down the tip, really. You know, if you like, knew what club, what fishing club he uh, fished for or whatever, I'd rather get that like, tip to them. Graham chances upon some of the local residents who knew the tenant. I feel a bit better about that now because, yeah, I'm, basically I found a home for them, right, so one of the pubs where I used to drink and that, so I take them down, I'm pretty happy about that now. For Graham, the day has certainly ended a lot better than it started. After clearing the flat of all the furniture, freezers and rubbish, the boys can call it quits. They'll return over the next few days to sort out the kitchen and embark on the deep clean. After filming, it took the boys nearly a week to clear out the dead man's flat. But against all the odds, it's been transformed. Steve can now have it totally refurbished and back on the rental market in no time. But first, in Leicester, council housing manager Steve arrives for work. We've just been given the keys for this uh, three-bedroom house and uh, let's go and have a look inside, see what we can find. As usual, it's horrible. It's Steve's job to clear up and refurbish council properties after the tenants have moved out, or in this case, have been evicted. He should now be used to this scene, but 
it still gets to him. When you walk into a property and it's left like this, it annoys you really. Obviously when they moved in it was all clean, tidy and cleared out and then they just leave this mess for us to clear up. It has a knock-on effect to the new tenants that are going to be moving in because they have to wait longer. They will get a bill for it though. Damage on this scale will cost thousands of pounds to put right. Leicester Council will use all its powers to track down the tenants to make them pay, taking them to court if necessary. But it's the human cost that really annoys Steve. This is a, a house, so there's going to be a family waiting to move in, so they'll probably be overcrowded in a flat, maybe homeless. They're in a bad situation where they are, desperately need of this property, but because of how it's been left, there's a massive hold-up for them. As well as the rubbish and vandalism, Steve has been warned by pest control that the house has been infested with rats and fleas. Steve has no option but to call in Suicide Sid and his A-team to clear the house. Suicide, who cares nothing for his own safety, has his special way of clearing a property. Within a few minutes, Suicide arrives with the Yellow Beast. It's going to be an entertaining day. There's a rat and there's a dirty rat. In Leicester, Suicide Sid and his partner Ian are preparing to clear the house, togging up to face the worst. Well, we've been told there's uh, rats in there, fleas, and it's uh, in a bit of a state really. The white suits may protect against the fleas, but they're not exactly air conditioned. These suits don't help. So what? You've got to work in them. You can't breathe in them, can you? It makes you sweat all day. With a quick spray of flea repellent, the boys can now venture inside. Once you open the door, you can, you can actually smell what's been living in here. And apparently, like, the kids have been living in this. It smells like a dirty nappy or some old nappies. That's what it really smells like. Even with the windows open, it's going to be hot work for Ian and Sid. While Ian takes care of the kitchen, Sid works his way down from the top. In the bedroom, it's quickly apparent what else has been keeping the family company. See where the mice have been living. That's what they do, lot. They've been living under the wardrobe, shred it, made, made themselves a nice bed. To let your kids live like this, it's, it's really unbelievable, really. Back down in the kitchen, the extent of the infestation is obvious. Most of this now is all mouse droppings. Imagine the kids have been coming in here, getting a pack of the crisps or whatever, getting them the food, the man's cooking in here, and that's what they're eating most probably. The work surfaces are horrible, and Sid's made an even more unpleasant discovery below. That's a big rat, look. You can see where it's been eaten. Look, see the maggots coming out now, look. They're still alive, look. Oh, it's, oh, it's this rim sap does, man. All right, if you look underneath here, all the maggots, the floor's wriggled with them. You look, you, you, when you actually look, you, you catch them all running out through the side of your eyes, and it looks like the actual ground's moving. But it ain't, it's just the maggots, they're all... Basically, they're just everywhere, really. You see this airlock moving, look. Like, imagine you, just, you walk straight in here and you see that start moving, you, you're going to get a little bit of a fright, aren't you? This may seem scary, but Sid's seen much worse. I mean, I've seen where dead bodies been moved out from a settee. And I've gone to grab the settee and, like, bigger maggots than that, where, obviously, I'd ate the bloke away off of, his, off of his head, apparently. And I moved the cushion and there was... Most will be three times as much as what I've seen on the floor there. But it's a smell. It does make you swallow a bit, you know what I mean? You do smell death. It's got that certain smell. And when I walked in, I knew something was dead in here. Having had their progress delayed, the boys will have their work cut out to clear this house today. There's no peace for the wicked. In Leicester, suicide Sid and partner Ian are taking a breather after discovering the unwelcome guest in the four-bed house. Sid only gets paid on the amount he clears in a day, so it takes a lot for him to halt proceedings. You start to swallow and you can feel yourself you want to eave after a time, you know, because of the smell. Revived, Sid and Ian can continue doing what they do best, but they do sometimes reflect. I have a bad day every day. That's why I destroy everything. <laughs> Collapse them all. It's the best way to get a wardrobe down. It took someone hours to pick this up. It takes me about two seconds to work. For Sid, things aren't as bad as they are for partner Ian. Today is his first day back doing house clearances after 30 years in a desk job at the council. It's not nice for him, is it, really? I can imagine people didn't live like this 30 years ago. But, I mean, if I come on my first job and you're coming into this, you think, oh, God, what have I let myself in for? 
It must be the hardest day's work he's done in 30 years, I'd say, you know what I mean? Without said, I'd be lost today doing this on my own anyway. <laughs> I'll be here all day, won't I? And tomorrow, it must admit, it's a bit of a um, shock to my system, really. <laughs> see a bad and like this. Whether it's Ian's lack of experience or the heat, Sid's feeling the strain. What am I going to be like in like five, ten years' time? Yeah, I mean, I'm 47 now, I mean, I don't want to be going up in the attics when I'm 55, 60. So I could do with like 20 year olds, you know what I mean? Let them do all the hard work. With the bedrooms cleared, all that's left is the attic. A couple of old tellies, suitcases, half a wardrobe. It's the perfect excuse for Sid to show his feelings. In Leicester, after hours of hard slog, Suicide Sid and his partner Ian have cleared the four-bed house. All done and dusted then, until they check the garden. Oh, look at this, man. I thought we'd finished, I did. Oh, what an iris. The contents of the shed are a setback, but at least Sid can take out some of his frustration on the garden fencing. And the old door. That's just a tap. The boys can't take away the discarded fridges as they have to be disposed of by a specialist team. But Sid always takes precautions before leaving them behind. I always set the doors off, you know, for kids to be around. You don't know if like, a little kid jumps inside one, because there's enough room for a kid. It only needs someone else to see something heavy on top. You ain't going to get out the, out the fridge, is it? The end's in sight. There's one last push required. It's been a long haul, but eventually it seems their work is done. And I can now honestly say this house is completely finished, which I'm glad. You expect an easy one on a Monday, but you don't expect this one on a Monday. Oh, I'm going to put my feet up for five minutes now and drink as much water as I can. Oh, Sid and Ian's hard work has paid off. What was a nightmare house was let immediately. In Leicester, council property manager Alex has been called to a flat after a tenant has left. He's got to make sure that it can be refurbished and back on the rental market as soon as possible. He's no idea what state the property is in. Been given the keys by the local office just to check, avoid property. Well, some it don't smell too good. The awful smell isn't the only problem. The whole flat's an appalling mess. OK, it's a pretty bad one. Doesn't look like there's anywhere to sit, anywhere to sleep. So, I mean, I don't know how someone managed to live here, but obviously someone did. Next stop, what's supposed to be the bedroom. Right, um, more clothes. Doesn't look like he's got a bed anywhere. I think we had a smoker, quite a few there, a bit of a mound of, oh, ash. Oh, there's his bed. Can't see where he would have used it to sleep. Judging by what he's seen so far, Alex can't be confident about the bathroom. Um, first time I've come across a bath like this, don't know what he's been doing in there. Some kind of fish pet, maybe. Got a nice toilet with faeces stains in there. Don't really fancy touching that. The final room he looks at is the kitchen. Uh oh, I think this is oh, source of the smell. Yeah, I think he liked his coffee with milk. I think lots of things growing in the milk. Never come across milk in that amount. I'm told never to open fridges, but never milk like that. Oh, I don't want to get too close to that. A little bit queasy, but try and hold it in. Before Alex can decide what needs to be done, he has to know exactly what he's dealing with. Until it's actually clear and we've got like a blank canvas to work to, you can't really, it's hard to say what we need to do while it's full of stuff. So the priority is to get it cleared, get it clean, and then we'll come back and we'll have a look then. Fortunately for Alex, it's not up to him to clear the flat. I think I've seen enough in here. Um, I think it's time to move on. In Leicester, council property manager Alex has called in the cavalry. Leading the charge, extreme cleaners Dave and Graham. Oh, it's bad, isn't it, mate? That smells a bit, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, we've got the dreaded old milk again. Oh, we've got the milk again? Yeah. That's your favourite, isn't it? Brilliant. We'll tackle that first, then. Decision made. Because of the smell, shifting the milk has to be the priority. It's just curdled up, and it? It stinks. In Graham's view, milk, good old milk, can be awful. 
I think this is probably the worst smell out of all the things that we do come across. It smells like sick, stronger. Man, that is bad. I can get out of here. I can feel that on my stomach now, like curdling a bit, but I'm going to fight it. One way or another, I'm not going to throw up. I'm not going to give you that satisfaction, no way. <laughs> of course, it's a priority. But does it have to be dealt with straight away? So should we go and get in the uh, living room instead of doing air day? You had enough of it already. Not the sins of the fathers, the sins of last night, perhaps. Oh, does it smell getting to you? Well, I went out last night. Did you? Yeah, it ain't good. Is it bringing it up? Just a bit. <laughs> now the milk war is over, Graham can open a fresh front in the living room. Well, at least it don't stink in here so much anyway, so we'll open the window anyway. I like the smell of rain. Better it's than milk, fresh. isn't it? If your job is clearing houses, you can't be too narrow-minded. There's always the possibility of finding something <laughs> interesting. Bit of a porno, man. Did you want that, Dave? No, I didn't want that. <laughs> oh, look, just found these, Dave, look. What you found? <laughs> wow. Sure. No messing about there, is there? Sharp as well. What are we going to have to do with them, then? Take them down to the gaff room, find out how we dispose of these, because it's not the sort of thing you can just take down a tip, really, is it? Hey, up, summarise. Gowns here, look. Do you think he was a bit of a weirdo? Or do you reckon he did like martial arts? I won't fancy being in here if he comes back. <laughs> it may not be Graham's style, but worth a try? Wow. Perfect, mate. Is that good? Yeah, I reckon that's the pot. <laughs> he may have kept himself busy, but he still had time for a smoke. <laughs> Found yeah, a packet of fags here, Dave, look. Bit of a ch chain smoker, I think. And just when it looked as if all the secrets had been discovered, there was this. Oh, it's a needle. Needle. I've got to take it a bit more serious now. I've got to be careful. That's brilliant, though, isn't it? That's spoiled me fun now. I've got to be a bit more careful now. Our boys have seen it all. Scary? Well, yes. Oh. <laughs> in Leicester, extreme cleaners Dave and Graham are making slow progress in clearing the council flat. And Graham is looking for a little distraction. Any good? As they clear the big items, more horrors are revealed. Think you liked his old smoke, don't you? Unbelievable. Disgusting, eh? Any sympathy they might have had for the tenant soon disappears. So it must just trigger them, just to wake up and think to himself, I sit now, I can't be arsed. But it's sad, no, it's the way it shows life, I think. Dave and Graham have worked together as a close team for years, but this flat is really testing their patience. Their thoughts turn yeah. to what it might be like if they had more help. If anyone did ever come and work with us, We'd want them to have, like I say, a strong stomach and just get stuck in, basically, and work as a team. It's what you make of it. If you come in with the attitude like, I don't want to do that, go home. Yeah. We don't need people like you. Go away. Yeah. We can get on with it ourselves. Once the furniture has been removed, the living room looks a lot better. Now they can focus their attention on the bathroom. It's pretty nice, doesn't it? Nice fish tank. Looks like he's been keeping fish in there, I'd say. People used to put pike in baths and that, like, to wash them out, like, you know, clean all the earth taste and that. But I've not heard of it done, like, since my old grandma type days and that, like. Uh, that's well strange, that is. They've cleared the rubbish from the bathroom, but perhaps the bath can wait. Come on, let's go on, Dad. A long day. Tomorrow, that'll be the start of the deep clean. In Leicester, Dave and Graham have returned to the flat for the deep clean. They've already transformed the bedroom and are putting the finishing touches to the living room. Graham seems in good spirits and he's keen to reveal the reason. I just had two guns just to finish the arm off. Everybody's got tattoos on this firm. If you've not got them, you will have them. We've just got the worst two rooms to go out the bathroom and the kitchen. Uh, we're going to leave them to last and fight them. Split the kitchen next in there, because that's the worst one, I think. Yeah. The living room is finished, so now they've got to get stuck into the rest of the flat. And it's not looking good. I think we missed the lot out of the cupboard. Joking. 
we're going there then. Oh, milk again. Oh, terrific. That's what that smell is then, mm. isn't it? Oh, dear. Oh, brilliant. We've got flies in here. Look at them all coming out. Absolutely. I bet there's maggots in the corner, though. When Sting. you move it. Oh, my God, look at that. <laughs> oh, it stinks out there. <laughs> it's odd, because you, you can wear masks, but eventually the smell will end up getting in the mask, and then it just stays there. So, if anything, just, just face it. Just face the smell if you can. Breathe through your mouth. And breathe out through your nose, but don't breathe it in through your nose. That's when you smell it. While Graham tackles the cupboard, Dave can concentrate on the sink. Let's get on my nerves sometimes, this job. I have to grip my teeth while I'm at work, and then when I get, when I get home, just go down to the gym and just release it there. Dave often relaxes by playing football. It gets some of the anger out of his system. But he feels it's not quite enough. Gonna start training next week for cage fighting. Something I've always thought about doing, but I've got a mate who does it, so I went down and seen him and I said, yeah, come along, so I'm gonna take it up, start next week and uh, see how it goes. I've got a short fuse, so I'll just, just to release some anger, really. Take it out on, on people <laughs> in, the, in the ring, <laughs> not on the streets. <laughs> of course, Dave needs a stage name, and Graham's got an idea. Kitchen sink, Dave. <laughs> Set your sink in and whack them with it, Dave. <laughs> Make sure you clean it first, though. The kitchen soon looks a lot better. Alex is due back to check on their work, but there's time to have a go at the bathroom and its fish pond. There's no sign of him having a bath because it, it was full of uh, water to keep fish in it. Definitely alga. He's either brought it from a pet shop or something like that to put his fish in, in the bath, or as he's gone fishing, he's got it from there. The bath may look unpleasant, but it's quite easy to clean, certainly at least compared with the loo. It's a uh, line scale. I need a jackhammer. <sighs> Stinking a bit now. It is time for Big Bertha. Can't clean it with that. <laughs> the old Jemmy's doing the job. That is breaking and entering, isn't it? Make sure you don't go too hard with it, because you'll end up through the bottom. Alex returns to inspect the property. While he looks round, Graham and Dave can give the bathroom a final once over. Oh, it's, it's so much better, isn't it? All the milk's gone. Um, it's still got a slight lingering smell of uh, mouldy milk, but it's definitely more bearable now anyway, so at least I could probably spend more than five minutes in it. But even after all their work, the kitchen doesn't pass muster. You can't let anyone use this kitchen, so we'd have to rip this entire kitchen out and put a new one in. Kitchens and bathrooms usually end up being replaced because the council refurbishment team find it difficult to bring them up to scratch. You can't expect our lads to work in a de in an environment that hasn't been desanitised, basically. This is the sort of thing you want to be giving them. In the nick of time, the boys have finished the bathroom and Alex gives them a green light. Well done, lads. Cheers. Yeah, nice Thank you very much, Jed. Thank you very much. Cheers. Appreciate it. Cheers, Alex. It's a dirty job. Well done. Mm -hmm.